Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Christina and welcome to Art Starts Explores. I am an artist and I like to paint, draw, print make, and create content. Our workshop this month will be on mark making through painting. Through these painting exercises and experiments, we can explore the what is when using gestures, colors, and patterns. So for the supplies, you'll need some paint brushes. I like to have a wide variety of paint brushes. Um, some small and some big. You might also want to have a paint knife. This will help you blend the colors together and create texture on the canvas. Some supplies you'll need are some acrylic paint. Right now I have white, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, I have teal, yellow, pink, green, orange. I recommend choosing the colors that you resonate with and that you like. And a cup of water because acrylic is water soluble. So you can basically mix the color with water to create different effects. And you also need a palette. And I'm using a paper palette because it's really portable but you can use a regular palette, like a plastic one, a wooden one, or a glass one. Then you'll also need a canvas. So I'm using thick paper for this canvas. Um, since we are experimenting, we can use um, paper to see how the paint feels and just get a good feel of how the paint feels um, when we apply it. So this is a practice of application. So first, let's put the colors on the palette. Start with some red. Some blue. Yellow. For the first exercise, I wanted to create a gradient. So what you can do is choose your brush and choose a color. So I'm going to choose some orange and you can start anywhere on the canvas. I would probably start the bottom just to get a feel and if you want more color you mix it with the water to make the color more smooth and it applies more and what you can do is you can add a lot of water and it can really cover the whole page. What does the color orange make you feel? 
How does applying the paint make you feel? What if you applied the paint with more pressure? The gradual blending from one color to another is great to learn how to add transition and depth and it is very common in design or background elements. And now to create a gradient, it's kind of like blending two colors together. You add some red. The darker color is probably more easier to blend into the, to the lighter color. Now this red kind of is like a cherry red, so it's giving me popsicle vibes. And the reason why we're doing this is because it's kind of fun. <laughs> I like to apply the paint on the canvas and just not think too much, just feel. Our exercises today are mostly focusing on how to apply and feel. And so when you go more down, you can create more of a gradient by just adding a bit more water. And the reason why we want, kind of want to go a little bit quickly is because the acrylic paints do dry fast. I feel like it kind of gives me sunset vibes like we're in the summer. I find that orange is a really energizing color. So when I use it for my art, um, it's very bright and it pops. And that's the thing with color is that what you use, it can create more of a effect. So if you use bright colors or like warm colors, it adds more of this kind of bright pop. For the next exercise, we are going to explore layers in painting and the reason why we do layers in painting is because there is a background and a foreground for this i'm going to use pink and so when we experiment with marks we kind of want to see how it feels and even just like swiveling it around and seeing what kind of texture it comes out with and since it's it's the background it's kind of low stakes here so you can just play around with it kind of having this like wavy feeling and kind of just have fun with it you know Probably the best part about painting is just doing whatever you want. And I think this pink color is beautiful. Such a nice pink. I normally don't use pink. It's a rare color to have for paint. What color do you want to try using? So I'm just going to apply this all over. I wanted to experiment with patterns actually because that's something I've been curious about. So I'm just going to leave that here. So with some patterns, I might go in I'm going to do orange again. If you don't have orange, you can mix yellow and red together. Probably need a lot more yellow though. Let's use a lot more yellow. And it makes an orange as well. It's probably not the most vibrant. If you have cadmium yellow and cadmium red, you can make an orange. Kind of just play around with it. I would just start 
by making some shapes. Some shapes are kind of funny. They're kind of remind me of alphabets. You can think about shapes and forms overlapping with color. The shapes and forms of everyday life can inspire these forms in the design. See, with, ab with, with, with shapes and stuff, you can kind of break them apart. So for example, you have a circle and you can cut up that circle into small circles and tiny shapes. Do a half, a half circle here. And just like have fun with it. Don't think too much. I'm kind of having fun with this now too. I'm kind of liking the outcome. Place that here. Since we are experimenting with shapes and forms and colors, we have a lot of room to play around. And when you create patterns, more about experimenting so and repetition. So if you if you like one shape, for example, you can keep repeating it. So I kind of like this shape here, this quarter circle. And also with 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 shapes, you can like add more shapes inside of it. And it's kind of like finding symbols and then making patterns with those symbols. The symbols in your everyday life. Maybe you see a stop sign, um, maybe you see a basketball, and then you're like, oh, that can be an artwork. Like that could, that could be a pattern. Even I'm like having fun with this. Like I'm like, whoa, what did I just make right now? <laughs> But yeah, with patterns, you can go anywhere. And I think that's the most fun thing about patterns is like, it just repeats itself. So you can just make like a lot of the same thing. Yeah, so there's, there's one art piece that is like, it's not kind of funky. Um, yeah, just not too much focused on realism. So when I was younger, I thought art meant you were really good at realistic things. Like you could, you could paint so realistically that, and that, that's a skill, that's a skill to paint realistically. But I also think it's a skill to think differently and not what's always been the norm and creating things that are new, like shapes or new ideas, new forms. And creating new forms can actually spark new ways of thinking. And that's what we are here to do is to think differently about art, you know, approach it in different ways. 
So I have another pink paper here that I did. And this is another way to exercise making patterns is with lines. So before we were doing like circular shapes and breaking that apart. And now we will do line shapes. So I think I will go with the, with the teal actually. So with the teal, just kind of just, just make a line. So when you think about making a line, like what are some things in life that has this kind of line pattern? Um, when I think of lines, I think of like streets. It's kind of like, like a road map. bicycle lane. See, it's all fun already. I think my favorite part about doodling with paint is that it's all freehand. You're just kind of making a gesture. So another line you can do is maybe across there. There. Also make like angular shapes. Also kind of do like angular lines kind of all over the place. So this one definitely has this more like vibrant tone. So you can also flip it around. You can also flip this around. And what is what do you see now? You can see a different position. It looks different. And then you can add some more angular lines there. Connect those there. So, what does it do when you flip the canvas around? Like, what changes? And how does it make you see the artwork differently? Yeah, we can just keep flipping this around. And I think this is the best way to make abstract painting is to keep flipping it around. Because then you can see something that you normally didn't see before. Again, see, I kind of like it uh, vertically. This is horizontal, and this is vertical. I I like it vertically. I find it's energizing this way, and that's kind of how we started. But definitely playing it around and seeing where it can go. Even even this way vertically is really cool. Actually, play with some form. Ideas. See, with abstraction, it's kind of like creating symbols and then layering it. So maybe we can add that circle again, the half circle that we're talking about, just to like fit some stuff in. And I think that's the best part about 
abstraction is you don't have to look at it the same way like you can turn your page move around you can literally get inspiration from just random things in your house like in that corner over there I see a little umbrella so maybe I'll do like an umbrella shape like a triangle like making those triangle shapes And it adds this like angular feel to the painting and maybe adding some dots maybe adding like a symbol like a smiley face maybe you can even do your name at the bottom so I'll just maybe write my, my name at the bottom a little signature you know you want to mark your your artwork when I think about making art especially during exercises it's more about transferring your energy onto a canvas and leaving a mark in this world and that's the question that I want you to think about is what do you want to express in this world? What mark do you want to leave in this world? And how does creating make you feel? For me, it makes me feel free. So what if we added more water to this blue and just went over it again? it would make the color more vibrant. See, I'm loving this bright electric blue. It's really giving me like bubble gum, fresh colors. And it's really electrifying. I think I can say this painting is really electrifying. Maybe I'll add a little lightning bolt. Honestly, for artworks too, you can even add like emojis that you like. Emojis are kind of cute and I want to add it. Maybe you want to add a little cherry. I don't know. Or maybe you want to add a heart or a smiley face. You know, we did that smiley face earlier. And just like kind of play around with it. I'm really liking this actually very fun. And yeah, and basically what this exercise is doing is getting you to feel the paint on the canvas or feeling the paint on the brush and um, making marks on the canvas. So the next exercise actually is what I just come up with right now is just focusing on patterns. So I'm covering this page up with some sort of like yellowish, pale yellow color, just so that we can focus mainly on the pattern. And the reason why we like to do patterns is because it's more experimentative. It just gets you to play around with the idea of patterns. Have the canvas down.
start doing patterns. And now I find that creating circular patterns is really cathartic to me. And what that means is just really relaxing. So I'll do circles. Circles. When we think of patterns, what are some things in our lives that have repetition? I think of patterns such as checkerboards, bricks, and woven baskets. Patterns are found in nature as well. What are some things in nature that have patterns? Now this is all like freehand. Um, if you wanted to do it not freehand, you can draw it out. So basically you can draw it with a pencil and then paint over top. And that's probably the best way to get a very precise art piece. But I'm just doing freehand because I want to just focus on uh, how the paintbrush feels on the canvas. So there are some patterns there. Now since we want to go further, I wanted to create a tiny hole inside of these. Kind of like donuts. Now, now it's now I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I didn't not expect to think that. Cause honestly, you like when you do art, you might think you're like making like you're doing work, but sometimes it's just like really fun. And you can and a lot of the times when you're having fun with it, like it shows. So just have fun with it. Like don't put pressure on yourself. Like also don't make it super complicated. Like. Just create the art that you want to try and like you're interested in. So if you're interested in painting, then you should just try it and then paint something that you're interested in painting. See? Oh my god, that was so fun. I had such a good time doing this one. This one was really fun actually. I like this one. Very nice. So there's that. With all the different ones that we did together, which one was your favorite exercise? I honestly think this one was my favorite exercise. I know it's a very simple design, but like the process of creating this was very fun for me. Like I, it felt just like natural. Maybe drawing circles is just like a natural thing for humans.
What do you think? Maybe you should try it out. How does this, how does drawing circles repeatedly in a pattern make you feel? Because I find it's very calming. In your cup, you can just swirl it around. If you want, you can add soap to really clean it up. Some of the things that we learned today are mark making, freehand painting, gestural painting, energy, creating can be fun, and enjoy the process more than the result. So through these exercises, I encourage you to reflect on the experience and how it made you feel and what you were thinking through the process and how you would like to explore mark making and art more. Very proud of myself that I tried to make patterns. That's something I usually don't do and I got to try it together. I would like to reflect on how I explored switching the papers around because that's something I normally don't do and it was out of my comfort zone but it actually ended up being a really fun experiment and creativity can actually be a more fun and playful it doesn't have to be super complicated or serious I hope someone was able to take something from this creative process and use it for their everyday life I, I believe that art can be integrated into everyday life and I hope that this inspires you to see art in everything. The journey is more important than the actual result. So I encourage you to keep going and have fun with it and be playful and um, yeah, make mistakes and learn and grow and do research on artists that you find inspiring and um yeah anyways have a great day take care um and have fun creating bye everyone